Hi, my name is Kai and today I'm represent you a video from my German channel Eplan Kurz Erklärt. On this channel I have very popular videos about five tips and tricks for Eplan P8. Roland Young, who has a very popular YouTube channel about Eplan, asked me if he can create this video in English. I will put you the link to Roland's YouTube channel in the video description as well as the link to my German YouTube channel and additionally the timestamp for each tips and tricks in this video. And now let us start. Hello, my name is Roland, Roland Jung from ePlan. I found this really nice ePlan P8 tutorial, ePlan P8 5 tips and tricks. And um, this is Kai. Uh, headings that does those really great so i just wanted to quickly do it in english uh he has here six uh six portions already at this point i just wanted to pick up on this one here so um the number one tip and trick on this portion number six you can read out their other ones uh is the structure box uh very often we have this occasion here in the plan where you use structure boxes in a way that it doesn't necessarily look that good. We can make them with a resessment like this. To activate this feature, let's say I'm going to a project where this is not yet done. This is a macro project in my case here. I'm going to open eventually one of these pages where this can be found, uh, maybe here. And to activate this feature, all you have to do is open your settings option settings you go to your specific project inside this specific project graphic editing general and you click here on that small checkbox draw structure box with recess which now allows me to pick any given box like this and to transfer this let's say as to my default representation which typically comes up here on the left hand side take this um, device tag and rotate it eventually to, to 90 degree and you will see it will recess right in here i will try to copy the format and see if i can just paste the format here onto another box and i can just put these in here it takes up less space small detail nice feature another one that he um, he presented to me is the uh, usage of navigators when you open a navigator like this, very often we flip-flop and switch between two different navigators. Well, first of all, you can take this navigator and reposition it. You can reposition it, let's say, here on the side so you can get both of them. But I don't need this one all the time. I only need it really when I need it under certain circumstances, let's say, when I'm placing components. So the rest of the time, I'm losing this space here. So technically what I could do is make this a little bit narrower like this, and this one here to, on the small arrow that points down, ask to make it a flyout. So flyout means I can now open it, it actually overlays the other one, and I can now pick out of here and then drag and drop as I would typically do it. This is a nice feature. So the flyout is a nice feature you can see there. You can also do this with several other navigators. I just inlaid it here. This is one of these toolbars that was basically not, and typically is not turned on. If there is a toolbar that is missing, or one of the uh, navigators that may be missing, such as the page navigator, what you can do is you can go here to the customize button. When you hover over toolbars, you can find here the page page navigator and then when you just drag and drop it inside here the navigators be careful when you go too far on the right hand side you have to find this black line and arrow and that basically just will put the page navigator right in there not to forget if this is your favorite setting to go under your view workspace and to save this as either a new workspace or as an existing workspace Otherwise, the changes may be lost the next time that you run the workspace. Very nice tip on this side. Another tip that is interesting that um, our friend Kai showed us is the error message management. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to flip back here, not from the macro project. I'm going to flip back to my regular project, and I'm going to go and drill down to my schematics. And on that schematic here, I will actually look for some errors. The errors, you may know that, is this check project here that you can run. Several things can be checked. And of course, whatever comes out of it will be shown here technically in the message management. Regardless of which one it is, you can pick a device and you can right mouse click, say, let's go to the graphic and you can see the object, okay? Inside this object, you can display, if you want, the text message that you wish, uh, that, that is actually associated with that particular um, message. You can see here, message text. That's one thing you can actually display. It. The device uses more functions than provided. Or if you want to see it at the, um, in the schematics, you can display it right here. So by adding here the uh, function text message or message text, which is here, this one, and then it will be displayed. Of course, don't leave it all the time on. You may want this as being uh, invisible. So this text, you can see it when you turn on your invisible text by clicking the letter U. You can see whoop, it shows up. The device uses more functions than provided by the associated part. Also interesting to know is when you highlight the message in here and you press F1, ePlan will show you in detail what that message is and what are the possible solutions. So we have here two solutions that are actually evoked and you can go into. Very nice, nice tip and trick that was shown there. Another one that uh, Kai showed us is anything that gets generated. And in this case here, we can actually talk about uh, wireless and we even can talk about cable termination sheets. We can talk about all kinds of different things that can be generated. And when it comes down to, let's say here, something like a cable diagram, you can, on a specific cable itself, I'm just going to jump back to the cable, control shift, click on CB2, you can see the cable actually is actually out here. You can take that cable and you can specify not only what report should be used, but you can also exclude it from the cable diagrams if you wish to, because in this list of properties down here, you have no output to cable diagram. Did you know that when you check this, you can actually eliminate this cable from the cable diagram? Could be in something that you know some people want. Another one would be here, no, not to be outputted on the cable overview. Also a nice one. Okay, so that's really cool. Um, last but not least is the usage of the terminal strip and the terminal strip itself, which can serve specifically here under the navigator when we synchronize. This is often how I look for it. So I right mouse click on a terminal and I can find it. You can see that we can define a terminal strip. And on this terminal strip for this particular one, you can choose very specific forms to be used when you generate the terminal diagram. Now, cute about this is that you can specifically choose a, a multi-level terminal diagram for multi-level typical terminals versus regular ones. So that would be something that can, you can do. Uh, or that when you know that you have two targets on most of your wires, uh, on most of your terminals, so two wires per uh, out or in of a terminal, you could change you know, the report. That's really nice. And of course, last but not least was actually the fact that uh, um, you can show on a specific page like this, um, the terminal diagram to actually show how it's connected. So the trick here is to run the menu utilities report generate. Uh, you select, of course, which report we're talking about. It's code engineer BD3 here, that's the project. You go here to the reports tab, you say new, new what manual placement of a terminal diagram, and you mal manually select which terminal strip you want. So if you want the power terminal strip, which in my case is TB1, you just choose it here. And finally, but not least, is to choose what 
report you want now when you you look for a report or a form in this particular case um kai was recommending not to use a static form but to use more a dynamic form you can see it often in the description you can also see it by looks and feel when you only have one line because it will only represent enough lines to show the report itself so you can put it here and you will see in this particular case all the terminals represented and associated to tv1 or tv2 are then listed in this list here and you can see what is connected on the inside and on the outside really cool nice feature so again the channel i picked this up from was actually here uh, where is it uh, it's a tutorial from uh, kai uh, he has also an e-plan in a nutshell tutorial nicely done so if you want to check them out uh, that was Roland Jung from ePlan just talking about some colleagues having some very nice tips and tricks. Thanks for watching this video. If you have further questions, please leave a comment below this video. Drop a like if you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe and activate the notifications. Hope to see you in the next video, which I recommend you on the right side. Grow your ePlan skills.